Go my hands, I can. <laughs> First graders, welcome back to your TV classroom. Today is Monday, February 22nd. I hope you had a great weekend. How are you feeling today? What zone are you in? Mr. Kevin, what zone mm -hmm. are you in today? Well, you know, today I'm in the green zone. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Why are you in the green yeah. zone today? Well, you know, sometimes things just work out. Yes. And last night I had a project at home and mm -hmm. I worked and worked and worked on it and it finally just worked out. Well, I have a question for you. The first time you tried to solve that project, did it work? No. Oh, friends, have you ever had a problem that you tried to solve in the first time it didn't work? Did you give up after it didn't work, Mr. Kevin? No, I did not. Oh, he kept going. He kept trying new ideas. That sounds like perseverance to me, Mr. Kevin. Oh. Nice job. And how are you today, you know, Ms. I'm Wally? in the green zone today. I Good. slept really well last night and I had a great dinner. Mr. Wally made a really yummy bacon broccoli spaghetti that was delicious for dinner last night. So that was great. And Oliver got to read some new books he got and he really enjoyed them. So that was really fun. So. I'm in the green zone today. How about you, Rashid? How are you feeling today, sir? Mm-hmm. Mm. You're feeling a little in the blue zone. Why are you in the blue zone today? Mm-hmm. Mm. You're sad because you didn't get to eat what you wanted for breakfast, yeah? Sometimes when we have our like, mindset on something we want and then we don't get it, it makes us sad. Do you have any ideas for what Rashid could do to be out of the blue zone? Hmm. Oh, yeah, Rashid could maybe ask if tomorrow he could have that for breakfast. Uh-huh. He could take some deep breaths, yep. Rashid, you go ahead and decide what you're gonna do to get out of the blue zone, okay? All right. Friends, it's Make It Monday. Let's look what number we're gonna make today. How can we use the numbers below to make the number 25? Hmm, I wonder what num, I'm actually gonna use our highlighter, what numbers we could use to make the number 25. <gasps> I have one. 20 and five. 20 plus five makes 25. Mr. Kevin, do you see one? I do. What it's do you a see? tricky one. Okay, I like tricky ones. Okay, 19 uh -huh. and six. Ooh, I like it. 19 and six makes 25. What about you at home? Do you see any ways to make 25 up here? What about, oh, I heard it, 17 and eight. Ooh. Hmm. 15 and what? What do you think, friends? 15 plus what's gonna make 25? 15 plus, yes, 15 plus 10 makes 25. Nice job. Okay. Hmm. I was thinking 13 plus 12, but there's no 12 up here. And then if I did 25, there's no zero. Hmm. What if I did 35? How could I make 25 with 35? Oh, I'd have to subtract? How many would I need to subtract? 10, and we have a 10 up here. It's right here, we already used it, but that's okay. Great job finding ways to make 25 first graders. 
Now, today we're learning to solve add two word problems. So before we were working on just how you add two numbers together and using a make 10 strategy or using a number line or looking at what we know to figure out what we don't know on a number bond. Now, we're gonna take those skills and now we're gonna have a story. We're gonna figure out what's happening in the story. Then we're gonna draw a, build a model to represent what's happening in the story and then we're gonna solve it. So. Let's look at this first one. Six chicks sit under the stairs. Four chicks join them. How many chicks sit under the stairs now? Mr. Kevin, can you show my whiteboard? So we're gonna read this. We've already read it once, and I'm gonna ask you, what's happening in this story? What's going on? Yeah, there's some little baby chicks sitting under stairs, and then what happens? Do, 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 do. Some more chicks join them. So now we know what's happening. We have something we start with, and then more comes along and joins. So we're joining to the original amount. That's why we call it an add to problem. Okay, let's read again, and this time, let's find the question. Six chicks sit under the stairs. Four chicks join them. How many chicks sit under the stairs now? What is the question we are trying to answer? Hmm hint for you from Rashid. Look for the question mark. Yes, how many chicks sit under the stairs now? Okay, what information do we have? Let's read again. Six chicks sit under the stairs. Four chicks join them. Okay, what's happening here? What information do we have? What can we work with? What do we know? Yep, we know that there are six chicks under the chair, under the stairs. What else do we know? That four chicks join. Okay. So now if I was going to use these, link, these um, linking cubes, they're called unifix cubes, and let's, I'm gonna use two different colors. Orange is gonna be the, or red, whatever it looks like, is going to be the chicks that are under the stairs, and then yellow is gonna be the chicks that join. So what am I gonna build first? What happens first in our story? Yeah, there's six chicks. So I'm going to count out six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to put a rectangle around it. So if you have your counters, go ahead and make six and then put a rectangle around the six. Dun, dun, dun. And then it says four chicks join. So now I have to decide as a mathematician, what am I going to do if four chicks join? Do I take four off of the six? Do I put four under the six to compare, or do I add four more because they join? Which one do you think at home we're gonna do? Yeah, they join. So four more join them. That means they come over. So I'm gonna count my four. One, two, three, four. Here they are. Do, 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 do. Four chicks join. And I'm gonna make a box around those. Cheep, cheep, cheep. <laughs> So we know one part is six, and we know one part is four. What do we not know? We don't know the total. We don't know how many chicks there are now. Look at what you know and what you don't know. I want you to write an equation on your board to find the answer. What would our equation be to solve this problem? What's the equation? We have one part and we put it together with the other part. What do we write? Is that adding or is that subtracting? Yeah, we put the parts we know. Six and then we're joining. So it's plus four equals, oh my goodness, do you see what it is? It's a friend of 10. ten. So what is our answer? Our answer is not 10. That's the number. But what was the question? How many chicks sit under the stairs now? So what's our answer? 10 chicks. It's not 10 toenails or 10 boogers, is it? No, we have to know the late. Our answer is 10 chicks. Okay, reset your board. Put your counters to the side. Reset, reset, reset. Or if you were on paper, get a new piece of paper. Let's look at the next problem. 
Rich has three coins. Now remember, everything's out of your hands. We're just reading. Right now you're thinking, what is this story? What's happening? Who, who are the characters and what are they doing? Rich has three coins. He finds more coins in his pocket. Now he has eight coins. How many coins does he find? Okay, what's happening? This person, Rich, has some coins in his pocket. He finds more, and now he has a total amount. Okay, let's, let's read and find the question. Rich has three coins. He finds more coins in his pocket. Now he has eight coins. How many coins does he find? What is our question? Remember Rashid's hint? Find the question mark. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how many coins Rich finds. Okay, this time our linking cubes are going to be coins. So we have to figure out what we know about the number of coins. So let's read again. Rich has three coins. He finds more coins in his pocket. Now he has eight coins. Okay, what do we know? We know that Rich starts with three coins. He has three coins. We know he finds more. We know that now the total he has is eight coins. Okay, let's model it. So take your linking cube. How many coins does Rich start with? Three. One, two, three. Okay. Put a rectangle. What happens next? Rich finds more. Do they tell us how many more? No, so we need to put a box, and then inside of it, we're going to put a question mark because we don't know how many Rich finds. That's what we're trying to solve. What else do we know? Now he has eight, so that means this whole thing is going to be eight coins. Hmm, what equation would match this problem? Hmm. Let's start with how many coins Rich has. Rich has three coins. He finds some more. Oh, we don't know. Now he has a total of eight coins. This looks like one of those what's missing problems. So this looks like one of the problems we did last time. So how do we solve this equation? Yeah, let's do a number bond. Let's figure out what we know to find out what we don't know. What do we know? We know our whole is eight, and we know the part that we start with is three. So how do we figure out this part? You have lots of strategies, use one. How do you figure it out? In my head, I'm going, well, I know that eight is three and five. So three and five is eight. If you didn't know that, you could take three away from eight, or you could count up from three to eight. I could do three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I know that Rich finds one, two, three, four, five more coins. So my answer is five. What? He, Rich found five coins. If this was my problem, I would put the number five right there on the line. You ready? Let's do another one. Seven ducks swim in the pond. Three fish swim in the pond. How many fewer fish than ducks? Oh, this is a new kind of problem. What's happening here? Yeah, there's a pond, there are ducks, and there are fish. Okay. Let's read and find the question. Seven ducks swim in the pond. Three fish swim in the pond. How many fewer fish than ducks? What's our question? How many fewer fish than ducks? Okay. What information do we know? Let's read. Seven ducks swim in the pond. Three fish swim in the pond. What is, our first, what is the information that we know? We know that there are seven ducks in the pond. 
And we know that there are three fish in the pond. Hmm. How many fewer fish than ducks? So this isn't a, I have some and some more come. That's not that kind of problem. And this isn't I have an amount and I take some of them away. What kind of problem is it? Rashid, what do you think? Oh, it's a comparison problem? It's called a comparison problem. Let me show you how we do that in math. When it says how many fewer or how many more than something else, this is what you do. You first build the things you know. So I have seven ducks, so I'm going to build seven ducks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are my ducks. Seven. Seven. These are ducks. Okay? And then what else do I know? Three fish. One, two, three. I know that I have, oops, I'm going to do it like that just so it looks nicer. I know I have three fish. Hmm. What do you notice about these two things here that I've put on here? Hmm. One of them's shorter than the other. Mm -hmm. Which one's shorter? The fish. Why? Because it has fewer. So what, or less. What this question is asking is, how many less does it have? That means, what's different between the two numbers? And we've done this before. We've looked at what's the same, what's the same, what's the same, and then counted the part that was different. So, what equation could we write for that? Oh, look at this. We're trying to find the part that's different right here. Look at that. I've got three and a question mark with a total of seven. Wait a minute, that's a number bond. What's my hole? My longest one, that's my hole. What's my hole? Seven. The part I know is three, and the part that's different is a question mark. The part that's different tells me how many fewer or how many more. So how do I find this question mark? What's the equation I could write? Mm -hmm. We could do. 3 plus blank equals 7, or we could do 7 minus 3 equals blank. You decide and solve. Mm hmm How many did you get? Well, let's just count. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is the part that's different. So, my question mark is no longer a question mark. It's for what? For fewer fish. My answer is for fewer fish. That means there are four more ducks than fish. Let's see. Same amount, same amount, same amount. One, two, three, four ducks. There's four more ducks than fish, which means there's four fewer fish than ducks. It's the same number. It's the part that's different. Now, when we get into subtraction equations and we start learning more about subtraction, you're going to learn that the answer to a subtraction problem is called the difference. It's the part that's different between the two numbers you've been given. It's the amount of space in between those two numbers. Sometimes we take away to find that number. Sometimes we count on to find that number, depending on what hap what's happening in the situation but it's called the difference. It's the part that's different between the two numbers. Isn't that cool? Let's reset our boards. Let's look at the next problem. Last one. Six small dogs play ball, two big dogs play ball. How many fewer big dogs than small dogs play ball? This is just like what we just did. What is our, what's happening? We've got big and small dogs playing ball. What question are we trying to answer? Yeah, how many fewer big dogs? Okay, let's read and find our information. Six small dogs play ball, two big dogs play ball. What's the information that we know? There are six small dogs and two big dogs. Okay, let's build our small dogs, six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. 
These are small dogs. I'm gonna make my bar around my counters. These are S for small dogs. And then this is B for big dogs. B for big dogs. And we're trying to figure out the part that's different. Trying to figure out that part. So I know that this up here is six. I know that this part down here is two. That's the part that's the same. And I'm trying to find the part that's different. Write an equation and solve. Okay, two plus something equals six. Two plus four equals six. So our answer is there are four fewer big dogs. Now friends, this is the first time we've done this. It's the first time you've looked at it. So if you're not sure yet, that's okay. But you're gonna give a go at this assignment. You're going to do page 379 and 380 in your math workbook. You're gonna talk about a number bond and what it is, and then you're gonna do some of the work. Today we were learning how to solve add two word problems where we knew what we were adding to or we were finding what we were adding to. We acted out the problem, we modeled the problem, we wrote equations, and we found a solution. Mr. Kevin, please tell them how they can send us things here in the TV classroom. Well, certainly, students, you can send them to TV classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. We would love to get mail from you, email or regular mail. TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. All right, friends. Thank you so much for learning with me today. Up next is going to be your break and then your time with Miss Oslin. For your time with Miss Oslin, you need to make sure you have your learning buddy, your ELA packet, and your learning notebook. And make sure that's ready by the time she gets on the screen. Have a great rest of your day. See you next time. Bye. Hello, I'm Gretchen. I'm a cellist in Northwest Symphonietta Orchestra, and I'm a cellist out of Northwest Symphonietta Orchestra too, in which case I'm actually mostly playing on an electric cello. I'll talk more about that maybe at another time. I'm wondering who among you play instruments and who listens to instrumental music? I hope you listen to instrumental music because it does something different to our brains even though I also love listening to music with words too. And I'm going to play a piece, a song, that uh, is an instrumental version of a song with words called Pure Imagination. You don't have to know it. It's from the 1971 film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> song that I play in the band that I'm in. I'm in a band with a couple other members of Northwest Sinfonietta. Anna Doak on double bass and Brandon Vance on violin. And then we have a percussionist, Don Dietrich, who completes our band, which is called Different Drummer. You'll see in the video that will show that Don plays alternative percussion. He built a desk that he uses for all of his sounds and it includes an old-fashioned manual typewriter and a trash can and suitcase and all kinds of things and we all helped find some parts of that desk and I wonder if you start looking around your home if you might find some things that make interesting percussive sounds uh, at one point looking for things I was looking for things that could be shaken so this is a container of granola and 
I found this um, cooling tray that made a great ring and pots and pans are good. I, I did take a cooking class where the teacher said not to tap on the side of a pan because she said that was mean to the food. But I think that if it's percussive and rhythmic, I think it's okay. So, sorry to grown-ups, um, but it's fun to make some sounds. So, <laughs> in the video that you're going to see of our band, we're playing a piece that Anna wrote called Mischief. And each of us represents a family member in this musical depiction, and the piece is a scene from family life. So you can imagine who is who and what we're doing using your imagination. I hope that you enjoy.
Hi, first graders. Welcome back from your break. Excellent job gathering your materials and being ready to go. You can take your ELA packet and your learning or writing notebook, your pencil, your crayons, put those off to the side. You won't need those quite yet. You can go ahead and hold on to your learning buddy if they are going to help you focus. Now let's remind ourselves today and every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, read, and write. You are a strong listener when you keep your eyes on the speaker, when you listen to the speaker, and when you think about the words of the book and the ideas that I'm asking you to think about. You will get an opportunity to share your thinking today, and I do want you talking out loud. You can share your ideas with your learning buddy, with me on the screen, or if you have someone in the room, you can share with them. Also, if someone is in the room with you and they are going to share, you get to practice your active listening skills, paying close attention to what they say because you'll probably learn something from their perspective. Okay, we have been learning all about personal narrative writing. And today we're gonna learn that writers use their life experiences as inspiration for their writing. What that means is they're gonna use what they think, what they see, and what happens in their life to give them ideas for what to write about. And we're gonna see an example from Arthur Howard, our author of our book, When I Was Five. And you might remember we read this book, I think last week, and it's all about our character and all of his, the things that he really liked and enjoyed when he was five. And then we're gonna see how that changes when he turns six. Pay close attention to how our author Arthur Howard drew on the character's life experiences to write this personal narrative. When I was five, I wanted to be an astronaut or a cowboy or both. Now let's take a moment. You're first graders now, so you're six or maybe seven. Think way back to last year when you were five. What did you thought you wanted to be when you grow up? Take some think time. Trying to tell your learning buddy what you wanted to be way back when you were five. Rashid, when I was five, I wanted to be a waitress. I thought that was the coolest job ever. Now, keep that in mind as we continue reading and thinking about how your experiences when you were five might be similar or different than what you think now that you are six. When I was five, this was my favorite kind of car. This was my favorite kind of dinosaur. This was my favorite secret hiding place. And this was my best friend, Mark. Okay, let's take some more think time. Think way back to when you were five. What was your favorite car or dinosaur or hiding place? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy. Rashid, when I was five, I really liked to play dress up with all of my mom's old clothes and shoes. Mark had a dog named Peggy and a brother who used bad words. And bunk beds, my favorite kind of bed when I was five. Okay, now our author has had our character tell all about their life experiences in this personal narrative. Their favorite hiding place, their best friend, their favorite car, their favorite dinosaur. Those are all life experiences that as authors, 
you and I can use to decide what we're going to write about. Now that we've done some thinking about what our favorite things were or the people that were around or experiences that we had when we were five, now we're going to think about now I'm six. And we're going to compare and contrast, which means talk, think about how they're similar and how they're different now that you are six. And I want to be a major league baseball player or a deep sea diver. What do you want to be now that you're six when you grow up? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy. Rashid, I think it was about when I was six that I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I never imagined I'd be a teacher on TV though. Now, did what you want to be when you grow up change from when you were five to when you were six? Or did it stay the same? That's something that you can write about. Now that I'm six, this is my favorite kind of car. This is my favorite kind of dinosaur. This is my second best hiding place. My favorite one is a secret. And this is my best friend, Mark. So for our character, some things are different. The type of car they like and the type of dinosaur they like has changed. It's different. What has stayed the same? It's best friend, Mark. So you do some thinking about what has changed for you now that you're six and what stayed the same or similar. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, what I, when I was five, I thought I wanted to be a waitress, but then when I was six, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. And that's different. However, when I was five, I really enjoyed playing dress up. And then when I was six, I got really angry if I couldn't wear a new dress to school every day. But that's kind of similar to playing dress up. Okay, now that we've had an opportunity to do some thinking about our life experiences, I'm going to model gathering my materials and beginning writing about my life experiences when I was five and how they're similar to or different from when I was six. So I have my crayons, I have my pencils. You'll remember we always get more than one pencil in case one is dull and needs to be sharpened. And I have my writing notebooks. Yours might look like this or it might look like this. I'm gonna write today in this one. So I'm gonna open it up to the next clean page. And I always start with the date at the top so that when I send this to my teacher or you send it to me, we know what the assignment was so we can see and give feedback. Today is February 22nd, 2021. And I'm thinking about my life experiences and how I can use those as inspiration for my writing of my personal narrative. And when I read when I was five, I thought about how when I was five, I wanted to be a waitress. So I can draw that and I can write about me wanting to be a waitress and how I used to pretend to write down orders of my family members. So I'm gonna draw that. Um, this is me. And I had long hair. And what I would do is I would have a notepad with a pencil. And I would go, I'll 
draw my couch. Be my dad and my mom sitting on the couch, probably watching Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune. And I would say, I'm going to draw a speech bubble. Can I take your order? Take. I hear the long A sound in the middle of take, so I'm going to use my silent E that I know about. Can I take your order? So I drew a picture about what I thought I wanted to be when I was five. Now I can write. I wanted to be a waitress. Ooh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the sentence frame from when I was five. When I was five, I wanted to be a waitress. Now, I want you to use that same sentence stem. When I was five, I, hmm, take some think time and think about what your sentence is going to be. I just learned in my phonics lessons is that AI also makes the long A sound. Waitress. Waitress. When I was five, I wanted to be a waitress. Now, I want you to turn and tell your learning buddy what your sentence is about something from your life experience when you were five. When I was five, Now, think about now that you're six, what is something that's similar or different from when you were five? So I wrote, when I was six, I wanted to be a teacher. Yours is going to say, now that I'm six, I, hmm, take some think time. tell your learning buddy what your sentence is now that you are six. I hear a lot of things that are similar and a lot of things that are different. So first graders, today we learned how writers use their life experiences as inspiration for their writing. And you are going to write about your life experiences when you were five, and your life experiences now that you're six, and you're gonna write about how they're similar or how they're different. Remember, you're gonna gather your materials just like I did. Notice I had everything I need. I didn't have to get up in the middle to go get my crayons or my pencil or my notebook. I had it all ready to go. You're also going to practice your independent reading. So when you go to do your independent reading, you're going to remind yourself of what your workspace is and where it is. You're going to gather like five books so that when you sit down, you don't have to get up when you finish one book. You already have one right there that you can start reading. And what I want you doing after you're done reading your books is think about, or while you're reading your books, think about the story elements. You'll remember, do this with me. 
character, setting, beginning, beginning middle, middle, end. end. And in your learning or writing notebook, that's what you're going to write about when you're done reading. So you have two assignments today. And you can continue tracking your reading goals. Send this to your teacher at the end of the week so they know what you're working on. We would love to see your writing about your life experiences when you were five and when you were six and writing about the story elements in your independent reading texts. Mr. Kevin, tell our first graders where they can send or how they can send us their writing. Certainly. First graders, ask your adult to help you. Send it to TV Classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us or you can send it in mail with an envelope and a stamp to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now, first graders, it is time for our affirmation. This is when we get to say positive things about ourselves before we go off to complete our independent work. And because we were thinking about your life experiences as writers today, I want you to remind yourself that you are worthy. Your story is important. So tell yourself, I am worthy. My story is important. Say it out loud. I am worthy, my story is important. Excellent job today, first graders. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.